Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be making some cloth simulation t-shirts, and we're going to do it with the designs of today's sponsor, Into the AM, makers of some pretty cool t-shirts that I'll tell you about in just a little bit. So let's jump right into it. So to get started, we're going to need to make our mesh that will become our t-shirt. And whenever you're trying to model something that exists in the real world, it's a good idea to look online to see if you can find patterns, templates, or blueprints for that thing. So let's jump over to Google Image Search. And we're going to search for t-shirt sewing pattern PDF free. So let's see what we get. The very first result I get is from a website called Tiana's Closet, which has some basic patterns for t-shirts. I'm going to use this one as the basis for this tutorial. I'll save this image to my hard drive and then in Blender, load it up as a reference image. Now I'll set the opacity on this image and lower it down. Next, I'll want to add in a mesh plane that I can use to trace these images. Now sewing patterns might take a little getting used to if you're not familiar with them. Many times they only have half of the pattern that you need. So in this pattern, we have the front of the shirt here, the back of the shirt here, the arms here, and then this is the binding for the neck. We're going to trace the front and back of the shirt and also the sleeve. Just using some basic mesh modeling, I'm going to do that now. Stopping here for a second, I now have an end gone that outlines the shape of the front of the shirt. I did it this way so I could very easily do an inset. This inset's going to help with some of the borders on my mesh. For instance, here along the collar, we want the faces to flow this way, but we do need to fix this corner so that the collar will go up and over onto the back of the shirt as well. I'm going to clean up these edges now. There, now this is going to give me the flow that I'm looking for. Now I just need to clean up the inside of this mesh and try to make it as even as possible. And there we go. That's going to do for now for the front of our shirt. I'm going to line the center point of the mesh up with the center point of the pattern and move this over. Then I'm going to add a mirror modifier. Turn on clipping and get this lined up. So there's the front of our shirt. Now the back of our shirt is pretty much the same pattern, it's just that the vertices have been pushed around a little. So I'm going to grab the front of my shirt, duplicate it, and bring it over to the back. I'll apply my mirror modifier and get rid of one half of the mesh. Now I just need to line up my vertices. One thing to watch out for is to make sure that the vertices end up in the same place on the pattern as they were on the front. I'll line these up now. And I'll add a mirror modifier again. And there's the back of our shirt. Now we could model the arm separate like this and then simulate it and sew it on later. But to be honest, that's going to be a lot of work. So we're going to go ahead and model this straight onto our shirt. So because we're going to model this on the front and the back of the shirt, we only need to model half of the arm. One thing we do want to look out for is how many points there are along one side of the armhole here. And we want that amount of points to be along this side of our sleeve. We've got 12 points here, so we'll need to keep that in mind. So we've got two already, and we can just add the rest here. We're going to move this image out of the way, bring this arm over, line it up the best we can, then join this mesh to our shirt and merge these vertices onto these vertices. One really quick way to do that is to select one here and one here, and then say M for merge, L for last. Now that that merge at last is our last operation, we can select two vertices and press Shift R and it will repeat that last command.
Just try to work those in the best you can. We'll grab that arm, duplicate it, and separate it. We'll bring it over to this side of the shirt, apply its mirror, get rid of one side, join it to the back, and stitch it up as well. And there we go. There's the front and the back of our shirt. Now's a good time to save your progress. Now that we have the front and the back of the shirt, we can go ahead and start the process of stitching them together. I'm going to bring the front of the shirt and line it up with the back of the shirt, go to the top view and move it forward. Now because we were meticulous about making sure these had the same amount of vertices all the way around, this is going to be easier. We're going to apply the modifiers to both of these and then join them. I'll take some matching vertices from the front and the back and then press F to join them with a the face. I'll go into edge mode and select one of these side edges. From here, I can just start holding down the F key. Like I said before, since my number of vertices were the same all the way around on both, these sewing edges are going to line up perfectly. The next thing I'll want to do is delete any faces where there are holes in the shirt, like here in the neck. And here in the arm. And finally, at the base of the shirt. The next thing we'll need to do is get rid of the faces along the sewing edges. This is also pretty easy. I'll alt click on one of these edges and that will select this loop of faces. I can do that for all of my remaining sewing edge areas. The next time I'll just press alt shift click. Now that I have these all selected, I'll press X to delete, but then only faces. This will leave me with my sewing edges. Next, we're going to need something to put this shirt on in order for it to work. For that purpose, I've imported a model from the Make Human application and turned it into my mannequin. I'll want to bring my shirt over and shrink it down to size. You'll want to make sure the front and the back aren't coming in contact with the model at all. Now we can take our first steps to making this an actual t-shirt. We'll take our mannequin and we'll add a collision modifier. We'll turn up the friction a bit and turn down the outer thickness to maybe something like 0.001. Next, we'll select our shirt and add a cloth modifier. You'll want to turn up the quality steps. I would say start at 10. We'll want to scroll down and under shape, we want to turn on sewing. And under collisions, we want to turn up the quality and we want to change the distance on our object collisions down to one. With those settings done, let's press play and see what we get. Other than the sleeves, we're actually in pretty good shape. But before we go any further, let's make this a little more interesting by adding a texture. I'm going to select my mesh, press U and then choose unwrap. And here in my UV editing panel, you see I've got a couple of nice layouts. For this shirt, we're going to use a graphic from the sponsor of today's video. I'll go to shading, press new, and with my Node Wrangler plugin enabled, press Ctrl T on my principled BSDF. From here, I can open an image texture. This image is from a shirt from Into the AM, who I'll tell you a little bit more about in just a moment. I'll go ahead and line up the front of the shirt. and then shrink the back of the shirt down and just put it up in the corner for now. Under shading, I'll want to make sure to turn the extension to extend. We'll turn up our roughness and turn down our specularity. Now before we go any further, I want to tell you about this t-shirt. So for my first sponsored video, I was sent some t-shirts from the folks at Into the AM to check out and to tell you about. I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy myself and I appreciate a good t-shirt. 
Of course, the graphics were the first thing that jumped out to me. The Abyss graphic, the one we're using in the video, is definitely my favorite. These shirts fit great, and with a 60-40 cotton polyester blend, they're light, but really comfortable. So, you can use my link in the description to check them out. And if you do decide to pick up a shirt or two, use my discount code JOHNNYM for 10% off at checkout. I know Into the AM shirts will be right up front in my wardrobe for some time. So, let's get back to building a t-shirt in Blender. So now that we've gotten this far, we need to make the arms work with our shirt. The best way to do that will be to add a temporary armature to our model in order to get the arms in the right place. I'll press Ctrl A and add an armature. This armature won't have to be very specific because we're going to get rid of it in the not too distant future. We mainly just need to line it up with the torso and the arms. You really don't have to be too particular at this point. Once you have this lined up, simply parent the mannequin to the armature with Control-P and choose with automatic weights. Now, if we go into pose mode with our armature, we see that we can get the arms in the right positions. One thing you will want to make sure to do is on your mannequin object, make sure that the armature deform is before the collision modifier. Otherwise, your cloth simulation will still be interacting with the undeformed mesh and give you some confusing results. Now with this set up, let's run our simulation again. This is looking pretty good. Although the t-shirt does seem a little tight, we're going to want to make it a little larger. Now that the shirt is wrapping around the body like we want, we need to get rid of these seams. We do that by adding a weld modifier to our cloth object. The mode we want is connected and we only want loose edges. The only loose edges we have in this mesh are our sewing edges. So that means we can crank up the distance and those sewing edges will all get removed. We'll go ahead and finalize our size and make sure this is all tucked in the way we want. It's looking pretty good at this point, so we're going to save off a copy of this where we're at now. The next thing we'll want to do is apply this cloth modifier. Now our mesh actually sits connected to the body the way we want. In addition, we want to apply our weld modifier. This will remove our sewing edges completely. Now our shirt mesh is actually wrapped around the body the way we want it. But we do want to return our mannequin back to its original pose. We can do that pretty easily. Going into pose mode, we'll go to frame 1. And with all the bones selected, I'll press I to insert a keyframe and insert all of the rotation keyframes. Now I'll go out several frames, let's say 30, and then under my armature, I'll choose rest position. I want this to be the final position of my animation. So from here, with all the bones still selected, I'll press I and insert visual rotation. Visual rotation takes into consideration things like the rest position or other constraints that might be on the bones other than their actual rotation or position. That way you can keyframe things and get rid of the constraints that are actually making them do that. So now if I go back to pose position and go to frame 30, you'll see that my arms are actually in the rest position. Now if I go back to frame 1 and choose my shirt, I'm going to add a cloth modifier back to it again. We'll turn up our quality steps. We don't need to turn on sewing because there are no sewing edges left, but we do need to turn down our distance and perhaps turn up our object collision quality. Now when we run the simulation, the shirt goes into the original rest position. Now, if you're happy with this armature and what it can do for your model, 
you can obviously leave it connected to your mannequin. But if you want to get rid of it, simply selecting your mannequin and pressing Alt P and clearing the parent will get rid of the connection to the armature. Now that my shirt is the actual mesh that I want, I'm going to apply my cloth modifier one more time. And now I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to it. I'll put it in simple mode and then I'll add a cloth modifier one more time. If your cloth does jump away, just go back to frame one and it should come back to where it started. We'll set up our cloth modifier one more time and we'll run the simulation. So there's the basic shirt. Now we also may want to add some detail around the collar or around the end of the sleeves. We could of course apply our subdivision surface and our cloth modifier and add them after the fact. Although, if we add too many things and then try to re-simulate it, we might lose the ability to get a good simulation. So we want to add our details afterwards. We'll do that with geometry nodes. First, we'll want to select the areas on our mesh that we want the detail to be added in. In this case, the loop around the collar and the loops around the sleeves. We'll add a vertex group and assign those vertices. After that, we'll add a geometry node tree, and under the end panel, we'll add an input. We'll turn on the attribute toggle and choose our group. So now this input will be the value coming in from these vertices. Now we're not gonna do anything too fancy on this one, just enough to give it a little bit of detail. So we just want to extrude the selection that we did. We'll use a mesh, extrude mesh node, Turn off individual, turn down the scale, and then we need to add a selection. We'll want to add a compare node and set it equal. We'll pull in our input, and we want it when our input is equal to 1, because that was the value we assigned to our vertex group. And then we'll plug this into the selection. We're not going to want much of a difference here, but just something to give a little bit of differentiation around the collar. We'll also move our subdivision surface to after, and we'll change it to Catmel Clark. Of course, that's an extremely basic thing you could do with the collar. You could probably create some pretty interesting stitching effects using curves, but that's more than I want to get into with this particular video. Anyhow, that's it for this video. I want to give two big shout outs. First to the sponsor of this video, Into the AM, and their awesome line of t-shirts. Make sure to follow the link in the description to get 10% off your order. And I also want to give a shout out to my awesome supporters on Patreon. The encouragement you give me through your support is much more than you can ever imagine. As always, I hope this video inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.